Hello esteemed General Chemistry 1 students. Today we are going to cover solutions and dilutions. Now, a solution is essentially a homogeneous mixture of two or more substances. Usually you would see a solution as something dissolved in a liquid. The two key components of a solution are the solute and the solvent. The solute is that which is dissolved, while the solvent is that which the solute is dissolved into. For example, in the case of salt water, the salt is what is being dissolved, so the salt would be the solute, whereas water would be the solvent, or the component that did the dissolving. A key component of understanding solutions is molarity, or, well, the concentration. Molarity is one of the different kinds of ways you can record a component's concentration. For molarity, it is a unit of measure for how much of the solute is dissolved, and the units for molarity are simply moles of your solute divided by the liters of your solvent and we represent molarity as simply with a capital M. Now, to get into some examples where we're calculating molarity, uh, here's a few different ones right here, where we have either calcium chloride or sulfuric acid or even gaseous carbon dioxide, each being dissolved into water. Uh, Getting into the first case, we are dealing with a, well, here's basically the word prompt. Five moles of calcium chloride were dissolved in one liter of water. Well, to calculate this bad boy, pretty simple. We need the moles of our starting, we need the moles of our solute, or in this case was being dissolved, which would be calcium chloride. The problem says we have five moles of that stuff and we are going to divide it by the amount, the volume in liters of our solvent, which in this case is water. So, if we have one liter of water, well then we'll just put one down there. Therefore, if we have five moles of calcium chloride in one liter of water, the concentration of calcium chloride would be five divided by one, or five. So, yeah, that is, that, <laughs> that's it. Getting into a different example would be the case of three moles of sulfuric acid being dissolved in two and a half liters of water. Well, pretty straightforward again as far as our calculation goes. We are going to take three moles of our sulfuric acid and we are going to divide it by our liter volume of water, our solvent, which in this case is 2.5 liters. So, what is three divided by 2.5, eh, it would just be this. 1.2 molarity. So, all right, cool. Our answer is going to be 1.2 molars, M-O-L-A-R, or 1.2 molarity sulfuric acid. So 1.2 M. Now, you might see the situation where you're actually not told the starting moles of your solute, but you're instead given an amount in grams. Well, this is pretty straightforward again. We've already done plenty of uh, gram to mole conversions. So this particular problem reads as such. 22 grams of CO2 gas, carbon dioxide gas, were dissolved in 500 milliliters of water. Now, first thing we could do is actually determine the amount of moles of our solute we're dealing with. And in this case, if we know the grams, then we can simply divide by the molar mass of our compound. And for carbon dioxide, if we're starting with 22 grams, we can times it by one mole over 44 grams, or essentially 
the flipped version of the molar mass. And that answer is going to give us, well, let's see, 0 0.5, yeah, 0 0.5, 0 moles of CO2. Now then, now then, uh, if we know our amount of moles of CO2, we just have to divide it by our volume of solvent. Now here's the trick though. We actually have 500 liter, 500 milliliters, but we want that in liters. So either move the decimal over to the left three places or take whatever your volume is in milliliters and divide it by 1000. So 0.5, cool. So let's see, we have 0.5 moles of so of CO2 dissolved by 0 0.5, li 0.5 liters. So that's pretty straightforward. Simply, or whoops, simply 0 0.50 moles and our volume is, well, 0 0.500 liters. So the answer that would be, well, one. <laughs> A number divided by itself is one. And there you go. That would be how to go from, say, grams of your solute to dividing that grams by the molar mass to get moles of your solute. And then it need be converting the volume from milliliters to liters because the units of molarity is moles per liter. And essentially, that gives us our 1.0 molars of CO2. Now then, for dilutions. Dilutions are a little bit... Eh, they're, they're a little different. Dilutions are simply, say we have a certain concentration of something, but it's far too concentrated for it to either be safe or useful in chemistry. Well, we can either add more solvent to essentially dilute it or decrease the concentration of that substance. And the key uh, math equation here is simply mv, your initial molarity and your initial volume, equals your the product of your final molarity and your final volume. This is a great way of quickly calculating either f final molarity if you know your starting molarity and you know your starting and end volumes, or if you know the molarities, then you can find one of the volumes. We'll com commonly see this equation ran out as M1V1 equals M2V2, but I'll just use initial and final. Solve for diluted concentrations, we can use the following cases. And, well, let's just get into magnesium nitrate or aluminum nitride or sodium bicarbonate. Each of these are slightly worded differently, so we're going to have to look at them from a different angle to solve. In the case of the first case, or <laughs> the first case would be 2 liters of 0 0.75 molars magnesium nitrate was diluted to 4.5 liters. What is the final concentration of magnesium nitrate? Well, the key here is the wording. It says we started out with 2 liters, and then it was diluted to 4.5 liters. So we can assume that the final volume is 4.5. Well, if our equation is m initial molarity and volume equals the product of final molarity and volume, and we only don't know the final molarity, then we can simply plug in everything appropriately. We can plug in the initial molarity, volume, and final volume. In doing so, it would look like this. Our initial molarity, or our starting concentration, is 0 0.75 molars, 
and our initial volume is 2.0 liters. Now then, our final volume, or the volume that we diluted to, would be 4.5 liters. Therefore, to solve for this guy, it's simply going to be, it is simply going to be 0.75 multiplied by 2, and then divide that number by 4.5, which effectively gets us 0. Point, lots of threes. So, 0 0.33 molars of Mg NO3 and then there are going to be two of those. So, magnesium nitrate. Cool. Our end molarity ended up being 0.33 molars. So that's one way to solve it if you know your starting volume and your ending volume and one of your molarities. Now then let's look at a slightly different worded case. In this case we have 100 milliliters of water which were added to 300 milliliters of 1.60 molar aluminum nitride. So we're not starting with 100 and then diluting to 300. We actually start with 300 and then we add 100 more milliliters to that. So once again, we know both of our volumes and we know our starting molarity. So let's solve that bad boy. Our starting molarity would be the 1.60 molars from the aluminum nitride. Now then, as long as we keep our volume units the same, we don't need to convert. So, our starting volume was the original 300 milliliters. Now, our final volume is actually going to be that original 300 plus the 100 that we added. Since that is the phrasing of the equation we're working with. So effectively, we have 1.6 multiplied by 300 divided by 400 milliliters, which would equal 1.2 molars. The key here is that it would be correct to simply convert those milliliters to liters, which in that case, that would be 1.6 times 0.3 liters divided by 0.4 liters, but we still get the same answer. The reasoning is because as long as, our, as long as our volumes are in the same units, they will cancel out. Therefore, you don't need to take the extra step to convert to liters in this case. And let's see, that would be 1.2 molars of aluminum nitride. There we go. And getting into another different worded case, let's look at this one. We have essentially two different components that are being added together. So, pretty, pretty craziness. The word problem is 200 milliliters of 0 0.50 molar sodium bicarbonate, aka baking soda, is mixed with 180 milliliters of 3.0 molar sugar. What is the final concentrations of each component? Well, let's just look at the, let's calculate the final volume or the final concentration for BS, the baking soda. Well, we are going to have, we already know our starting concentration. For the baking soda, it was half a molar. Now, the starting volume of the baking soda was 200 milliliters. Now, the final volume of combining both solutions would be the original 200 milliliters from the baking soda solution plus the 180 milliliters of the sugar solution. 
so effectively 380 milliliters in total. So that would end up being 0.5 times 200 milliliters divided by 380 milliliters, or effectively 0 0.26, effectively 0 0.26 molars. So, all right, cool. And that would be the baking soda. go. Man, I tell you what guys, coating, this is fun stuff. Well, let's look at the case of the sugar. Well, in this case, we are going to be dealing with the falling starting concentration of the sugar was 3.0 molars, and we are going to multiply that by the starting volume of just the sugar solution, which was 180 milliliters. Now then, we are still, for the final volume, it's going to be the total volume again of both solutions added up together. So the 200 plus the 180, or effectively 380 milliliters. Therefore, that is going to equal, that will equal 3 molars times the 180 milliliters divided by the final volume of 380, or 1.42 molars. Point four two one point four molars of eh, sugar. And that is how you would solve the phrasing of that guy right there. Now, that's pretty much it for calculating concentrations for a solution that you prepare by simply dissolving something in there, or the different ways you can calculate final concentration from dilutions or combining different solutions. So as a bonus, here are two problems you can do, and they are the following. 35.28 grams of hydrogen, H2, of molecular hydrogen were dissolved in five liters of water. What is the concentration of the solution? Well, the molar mass of molecular hydrogen is 2.016, so Convert the grams of hydrogen to moles of hydrogen, then divide by the liters of water. Boom, done. And then the second bonus would be the above solution is, so whatever concentration you get for the above solution, it is mixed with 3 liters of 2.5 molar oxygen. So, effectively, you have the 5 liters of your hydrogen solution, and you have 3 liters of your 2.5 molar oxygen solution. When you combine both of those solutions, what would be the new concentration of each? Well, that would be a situation where you have your starting concentration of either your hydrogen solution or your oxygen solution times by its starting volume in liters divided by the total volume in liters, which would simply be 5 plus 3 or 8 liters. Come up with the answers for those guys and submit those, and you can get some groovy extra credit. But that pretty much concludes at the 19 minute mark our lesson about our introductory lesson in concentrations. Bye bye.